massive smear, massive smear. Um, it's quite easy to smear these days. Um, you know, Goebbels had the radio. We, you know, a company, a corporation or a government has, has the whole internet, so an interconnected world. So I just made that observation. And um, one thing I've observed about Julian Assange, because I've asked him, I've dinner with the guy um, often, is he is not a proponent of radical transparency. In fact, I haven't met anybody in his organization or anybody connected with him who is. He fundamentally believes that secrets should change insofar as a government has the right to maintain secrecy in the interest of its population. Um, and, and Julian has, uh, accepts that completely. He simply thinks that at the moment, secrets are kept um, as a kind of default situation. So here's the information, of course it's secret, unless there's a reason for it not to be secret. What he suggests is should be turned on its head. There should be a reason to keep things secret, and that should be the default. And, and so um, I, I, you know, I don't think he would disagree with you. Just on that, I mean, I, I suppose again, that's where I, I sort of have problems with it, because who is Julian Assange to decide what should be kept secret and what should not be kept secret? Again, he's the gatekeeper, setting himself up as the gatekeeper but of this situation. Who are you? And no, I'm, I'm not You're saying I am anybody, but he well, is. The, 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 the whistleblowers go to him. The whistleblowers go to him, and he has a mandate because he receives public money from individuals in the form of a fiver here or a tenner there. Um, and so he has a mandate. Um, he, ha he has a mandate that uh, is not too dissimilar to yours. Well, he has a mandate from those individuals. He doesn't have a mandate from everybody. He certainly doesn't have a mandate from everybody, for example, in the United States. Mm -hmm. One of the stories I was particularly interested in was uh, that of Michaela Wrong, I think her name was. She wrote a book about corruption in Kenya. Um, and she was having troubles getting the book published in Kenya uh, because of libel laws there. And Julian Assange took it upon himself to publish the book against her wishes, uh, because he felt the people of Kenya had a right to know uh, what was in her book. Uh, she asked him to take it down and he wouldn't. Uh, she said that it, it decimated her sales. You know, again, he set himself up as this godlike character. Who just, I think the, the quote was, the book may be your baby, but it's now Kenya's son. You know, who is he to make that judgment? Again, I think he has too much power for one individual. Um, but in, in relation to your question, I, how much information should be made public, I suppose the question is who makes that decision, who is the gatekeeper, and again, in, the, in this particular instance, I think he is the gatekeeper, I don't think that's a healthy situation. But look, to, to be fair, I mean, you know, our assumption as journalists always has to be in favour of the publication of all information, unless there is a very profound reason why it should not be published. And actually, this is not, and I agree with you a bit about this, this is not a particularly radical point of view. The Freedom of Information Act, before it was gutted in Ireland, so going, if you go back to the original Freedom of Information Act here, which was passed, I think, in 1995, um, contained a very, very powerful clause, which simply said, the assumption in relation to the release of information under the Freedom of Information Act is that it should be released unless there is a good reason why it should not be released. And that is, a, to, to me, a critical formula in a democracy. You know. This is public information. The vast majority of the information that was published by WikiLeaks is information that actually belongs to the people. It's been generated by public servants who are being paid for by taxpayers. Um, the assumption should be that people should have access to that information unless there are very good reasons otherwise. And I think the, the long-term effect of WikiLeaks should be to change the culture of the way public institutions operate. You know, if they don't want Julian Assange to be the gatekeeper, then let them behave democratically, let them behave transparently, let them put information online on a regular, routine basis. Why, for example, just to take one very simple example, why does every government department not carry, at the end of every week, a list of all the people that the minister in that department met during the week? Why not? What's wrong with that? Really simple stuff. What lobbyists were present? What were the subjects discussed? And then allow people to start using that information and follow up if they want to ask more questions. You know, the, the culture within powerful organizations is a culture of secrecy. Uh, to use another example, I mean, right now in our parliament, which is sitting today, the questions will be asked, parliamentary questions will be asked, and you know this very well, you know, parliamentary questions are asked, what happens? Civil servants spend a lot of time, a lot of our money, building up files of possible answers to follow up questions which might be asked. The file is secret. 
So, and the job of the minister is to give as little of that information as possible in answer to our democratically elected representatives. You know? So our money is used to, 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 to bring forward information which we are then denied. You know? So that culture has to change. And the people who are going to change this are going to be often responsible, old-fashioned journalists, but they're also going to be slightly mad, eccentric people like Julian Assange, because that's the way change happens. Of course. You need people who will actually shake up these systems. Yeah, the danger is, um, of course, it could go the opposite direction, uh, which is what we saw with the Freedom of Information Act, that uh, as, as the Freedom of Information Act opened up uh, government uh, documents to the public, government uh, officials stopped writing stuff down so we wouldn't be able to see it. Uh, and of course, if there is a danger that WikiLeaks will have that effect also, that less will be written down formally in emails, that more will happen through conversation or some way that we can't track it. Uh, and there is that danger there as well.